And we've just heard about the climate service of Copernicus. We will now move on to the marine service. And it's with great pleasure that I welcome Pierre Baruel on the scene. Pierre is working for an organization called Mercator Ocean, and that was not an acronym, I noticed, so that's very nice. And um, Mercator Ocean is the organization that has been entrusted the uh, coordination of the marine service by the European Commission. Pierre is actually the coordinator. I also noted that the name changed. It's now called CMEMT. There we have an acronym again. It's called the Copernicus Marine Environmental Monitoring Service. Is that right? Excellent. So, Pierre, it's a pleasure to have you here, and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Thomas. And thank you for this invitation. And we, we were talking to uh, lunch with the Copernicus colleagues, saying that it's, uh, we are very lucky to meet all of us in Stockholm just to talk about Copernicus. It's not so, so frequent, so thank you very much for our Swedish colleagues. So we are now moving to the, uh, the merit side. Um, I'd like to explain to you what we have today and um, well, I will explain the objectives of this. But uh, as Vincent Ripoc for the atmosphere, the marine, uh, the, the, the marine is one of the, uh, the, the, the services which is actually running already. And uh, so we have some, um, some momentum and uh, my goal is to engage uh, more Swedish users in this. Uh, I'm starting with the, what I would like you to, uh, to know um, if this is one thing you, you, uh, you, you have to know, this is this. What is this Copernicus Marine Service? This is something which is providing you with uh, essential organ variables that are currents, temperature, salinity, sea level waves, sea ice, sea winds, and biogeochemistry. And uh, this is something you will, you will find and you will find on, on the Copernicus Marine portal and which is delivered. This is something which is delivered um, in real time to have the real time assessment. We have also forecast and also uh, trends over the, the two last decades. So this is uh, clearly um, something which, which well, you can use for operational activity or research or, uh, or assessing trends or something. And uh, this is something which is available for the global, for the whole planet, with uh, focal uh, areas that are the European seas and including the Baltic, which could be of importance for you, and, and the, the Arctic also, and this uh, Atlantic area, which we call it the Atlantic Norway Shelf. This is Norway Shelf. Whereas the southern part is called uh, uh, Irish BCK and I and um, I, I, I forgot. I mean, this is <laughs> Iberic. Sorry for my uh, Spanish words. And the Red Sea and the Black Sea. And the last but not least, uh, what is proposed to this um, on this Copernicus Marine Service is something which is very basic, but this is on purpose. You can uh, discover what we have. You can view. You can download, and this is open and free. And then the rest is for you. If you develop business uh, with this, we are very happy and we support you. If you do research, uh, if you uh, run a, or write a report for an assessment at the national level, we are we're happy. So we support you with core information and services so that you can do your, your, your own activity. So this is the Copernicus Marine Service. Now, I would like to introduce you this team. There are four. And this is uh, Cedric, Veronique, Mark and David. And these people, they are in, uh, in the south part of, of France, in Toulouse, where it is actually uh, cold and, and uh, raining. And uh, they are connecting the users with the producers. They are managing the emails, they are providing assistance. And this is they are the, the core team, which makes me, makes me thrilled. I mean, this is something which is really connecting the people with the experience where they are, because we have producers everywhere in Europe, including in Stockholm and we have uh, users in all, on all continents. So this is their duty. And in practice, they are, uh, they are in contact with uh, 5,000, 6,000 subscribers. They, they reach uh, in September, um, well, they, they welcome uh, new users in September. These team compensations are more than 1,000. This is on all continents. Uh, they are disseminated or providing assistance to, to get the data. Um, they, they, they propose already uh, more than 100 terabytes, uh, which is more than what was delivered uh, last year. 22 million of transactions. They are quite happy with the, uh, the performance, the availability of the data, the portal, and if they are not, they are looking, they are, they are contacting the producers to, uh, to, 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 to say that it has to be, uh, has to be uh, fixed. 
And when they ask people, uh, are you satisfied with the service, they, they have a score, I mean it was in September, of 4.8. So they, this is something which is um, interesting. And why am I explaining this? Because there is, a, there is an email address if you want to contact and open a, a dialogue with them, this is good. But I have something with, with, with this, is that these people, they are really um, uh, building a dialogue with their users. They are sending questions, are you happy, do you want more? Do you need assistance? What do you think if I do this and this? And they have a very good uh, rate of reply, except in one country. <laughs> so we need to understand why. And uh, because this is very important for them, one of these uh, uh, operational guys left his duty to travel to Stockholm. And he's standing at the end of the, uh, uh, just, just in this uh, room, close to the, the booth of the marine side, and he's waiting for you. So you know, his, his name is David, and he decided to come and to talk to the Swedish users. So this is an introduction to the discussion you will have with David later. This is the object of my talk. Um, I will very quick to explain what is this Mercator Ocean, which is not an acronym, and why it can be an ally in your uptake. More important, what is the Copernicus Marine Service, and particularly what you can expect from it, how to enter and what you will find once you are in. And more important, why should we foster the uptake of the Copernicus Marine Service in Sweden? What are doing the others, what you're doing yourself, and what are the means to do better? Okay? So the first part is about this Mercator Ocean, which has been entrusted by the EU for implementing this Copernicus Marine Service. We are a small company. Uh, we are a non-profit owned by public institutions based in Toulouse, France. And uh, we are doing only one thing, which is ocean forecasting, uh, to deliver this freely. And we've been interested by the EU for implementing the Copernicus Marine Environment Monitoring Service. The short name is CMEPS. And we can call it a marine service if you want. Uh, three things about this Mercator Ocean, so that you understand uh, how you can play with this, uh, with us. The first thing is that our core activity, I mean, we, we've been invented for this, is to run global ocean system, uh, which is 3D modeling, assimilating everything, the space and the in-situ observations, to provide real-time uh, assessment and to run long-term simulations. And we are running global ocean system, which is not enough to describe what is uh, uh, happening very close to Stockholm, uh, but which is good if you want to, uh, to develop your business uh, outside. And uh, it means that we, we have at home all the, uh, all the skills to, uh, to say something about the quality of the products. The second thing is that uh, since we are not doing everything ourselves, we are a very small company, our strategy is to, really to work in partnership with others. And um, we are working with a large number of providers for um, getting observations, or getting other models at the regional levels. And this is something we develop in the research and development phase of Copernicus, which was called MyOcean, and that we continue in this operational phase of Copernicus. We started contracts, we opened we open, uh, procurement for that, and we completed contracts this year uh, to have the service elements of Copernicus uh, run by different uh, organizations or consortia uh, in Europe. And, uh, and the SMHI, which is uh, one of your uh, Swedish institutions involved is part of the um, of the uh, service uh, the, the contract for the Baltic Sea, and uh, so this is how we work. And the third and the third um, message related to Mercator Ocean is the way we intend to implement this marine service. So this is the timeline for this um, multi-annual financial framework, uh, which is the uh, the EU vision of the situation. Then we sign as as ECWF the delegation agreement last year. And uh, we are on duty until uh, spring 2021 uh, to implement the service. And uh, how we will do that? Uh, of course, we, we started coordination, uh, coordinated everything, but we are uh, we have two uh, large um, actions. The first one is the operational production of the data, so that all the products that were presented a few minutes ago are uh, indeed available for you. And uh, we open documents uh, as soon as we, 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 we had the signatures, 
and we have in place the main contracts for the coming three years uh, with the main uh, contractors for the different areas to manage the observation data or to run the models in the Baltic, in the Med Sea, in the Atlantic, etc. etc. This is in place. So this is secure. Everything is, is okay and you can uh, take it for granted that the, the service will be delivered. And we will renew this contract here. And now we are starting this part, which is to engage more uh, stakeholders uh, to get good ideas for um, um, bringing innovation in the service. Innovation that could be scientifically, uh, scientific innovations. You could improve your modeling issue this way, or on the user side. If you change the formats, you change everything in my life. And this is what we call service evolution and user uptake. And we will open this next week. And you're very welcome to understand this because it means that if you want to uh, influence the future of the Copernicus Money Service to be sure that what you're looking for will be done the way you think it should be done, this is an opportunity. That's all for Mercator, so we're a small company we're working with uh, in partnership and uh, we welcome all cooperation for this. This is always done through public procurement. Fair competition, open, so that anyone can, uh, can, uh, can, can bid and uh, will be treated equally. So the second message is what is exactly this Copernicus Marine Environment? monitoring service. What is it and what's in for you? Um, the first thing is that the goal is to serve a wide range of applications. There is no um, dominating uh, area where uh, that will drive all the, uh, all the developments. We need to be uh, useful for all these uh, different uh, applications, all these Sectors that could be that could run from marine policies and public information. Maybe you're working in this area, or uh, offshore energy in the industry, but also races and regattas, and also naval operation, coastal expeditions. And we contribute. We do contribute to the climate as well, as one of the the, the core service, and as, just as well as land and, and atmosphere. So this is what we have in mind when we start thinking about the Copernicus Marine Service. The other thing is that. We want and we need, we must um, be simple. Uh, the, the, real, uh, the, the, most, the, the first driver we have is to, to uh, add value by simplifying everything for the users. We know that it's not easy to uh, intercompare or to combine all the information that are available for in situ or for satellites or for modeling uh, things. So this is our, our job. And we, we, want to, we, we provide a core service delivering generic information. We have a limited number of products, but we want them to be useful and of very good quality. We have a single point of access, so that you don't have to, to, to run everywhere to get all the, the different pieces of the, of the portfolio. And uh, we are working on common standards, so that it's, it's stable and, um, and uh, familiar for you, um, even if you, you go at the international level. So this is the, the main driver. And then, um, in practice, it means that the, the people that were selected uh, in the different contracts that are already in place, they are taking care of, they are taking care of this. I mean, we are uh, managing the, the relationship with the space agency or with the more fragmented in situ communities so that all the data requirements uh, are, are, are fairly done, that all the, uh, the discussion that is needed or the support we could provide to the European Commission in the, the, the planning for the for the sentinels and others uh, is done uh, with the requirements of the users. Uh, so this is our this is our uh, this is what we do here. We are running all the uh, other things that are dealing with the production of the data. We are um, um, performing in, in, um, things so that all these different centers that are interconnected to produce one single catalog are interoperable. And every year, spring we propose a new version of the service with a release with all new products or improvements that were identified or asked by, by users. So we have major release every year, let's say May, and in May, and in the meantime we can update the system if there is something to be, um, be fixed or if there is something, for instance, a satellite like Sentinel-3 um, um, is launched, we update the system for this. 
So this is our part of the, uh, of the activity. This is something that might be not visible because the goal is to simplify everything for the users and at the end this is a portal. And uh, you, you have this, uh, this portal, you enter in, in this. If you're new, you can register, you can ask questions to the desk, etc. And um, this is a brief illustration of what you will find on this. But David here can, uh, can give you more details, of course. Uh, you can decide to go uh, enter into this uh, by selecting your area. For instance, you already decide to go uh, for the Baltic Sea there, or you decide that this is not the way you think. You, you think about the parameters because you're really keen uh, about the currents. I discussed with uh, Monica for the Chalmers uh, University during the Lamp Judgeback. She's uh, working on currents. And I was explaining to her that uh, by clicking on this, you can access all the currents with uh, assessment of the quality, and you can connect with the people that are producing this and enter into a, into a working group so that um, she can influence the way uh, the, the metrics are designed for the assessment, for instance. So you can decide that this is the currents you want to, to work with, or uh, the time coverage. I really want to, to, to say something about the uh, the two past decades, so I will go for this, uh, this uh, multi-year products and, um, and I, I don't want to, to be perturbated by the real-time issue, this is not my business today. And, uh, or you really want to talk with people or to, to, to use the satellite and nothing else, or you want to use the model and nothing else. In the model we assimilate satellite and in situ what you want a common function. Okay, so these are different ways to uh, enter, but uh, there are other doors, but it would be uh, explained to you if you, if you need more. Now, f five cards uh, to, um, to provide you a summary of what is the uh, added value, which is um, well, the feedback we have on the users. Uh, they say we appreciate the fact that this is a, a unique service, a single uh, one-stop shop window. Uh, there is something where we can go for the World Ocean or for the European Seas. And uh, we have the, the ocean variables we need. And this is, this is what we want, There's, there is a single place. And we are very happy not to cope with all the different uh, producers. Uh, you simplify my life with this. The second thing is that um, this is a place where uh, the, 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 the information coming from the satellites, the institute and the models um, are, are combined. And the people are really uh, working together and you propose something, they propose something which is uh, intercalibrated or intercompare, uh, interdiscussed, and uh, which is an asset as well. You have other places where you will talk only about satellites, which are excellent for this. Other where you have people talking about the in-situ variables. Here, we're talking about temperature. And then we will bring in the discussion people from the model satellite and in-situ, but the goal is to, to serve you with temperature occurrence or something else. The third thing is that since behind the screen you have a lot of uh, science, a lot of skills in science and, and technical because this marine operational oceanography, this operational oceanography as well as the atmosphere and climate is really based on a strong research community. It means that everything which is produced is assessed and when you get the data you have a quid quality information ID which say, okay, the quality, the expected quality is this one. And this is done by scientists. So uh, we do not pretend that this is excellent, but we say, okay, this is the quality we have, and we do the better for this. So the assessment is important, and this is where science and uh, operations are very, uh, are very close. <coughs> And more than that, we, have, uh, we are involved in the international working group so that the metrics we invent at the European level are endorsed at the international level, which is important for, uh, for this, um, this activity. The fourth one is that uh, this, this famous uh, uh, worlds that are user-driven, user-driven, we, we try to make it real, even if we know that uh, this is something which which needs uh, lots of engagement of, of uh, community, including the users, including Sweden. And, uh, and, and the, 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 we measure what, what, it, what, what is happening, we measure what the, the users are doing, we take into account the, the requirements, we have the requirement tables, we manage everything uh, so that the, uh, the evolutions of the, of the service uh, are meeting the, the needs that are uh, expressed. 
And we are very happy to, to understand that there is strong uptake of the users. We started with zero, and uh, we observed that uh, we are reaching now uh, 6,000. And uh, this is not only Europe, this is the European uh, production, which is used by uh, by US, by the South America. Last time he was um, showing China. So it's, it's good to have uh, this European production being visible and used um, elsewhere. And, the, and, the, and the, the last one is about the, uh, the fact that we observe how much we are to be of interest for the different communities. And we, we have here a multi-sector response, which is quite good, and we, uh, we used to, to think with the four, these four areas. We know that here we need to do something better. We know this is important for us. And, but we, we, we manage our, our service for this. And that's all for uh, this, uh, this marine service. Um, if you go uh, to the booth, you will have uh, David plus uh, um, assistance to, to play with the, the portal, plus a leaflet where you have a list of all the products. You can take it at home. And for instance, you have the model products where you understand what is available in the Baltic, what is assimilated or not, um, how many, uh, how, how many uh, files you have to download, etc. So this is something which is available and uh, it seems to be uh, very useful because, they, because people are looking for this. So you're lucky uh, David has some of them. Mm -hmm. Now the third part is first to the use of uh, these products and services and work for Sweden. Uh, so this is the, an update of the, uh, of the curve that was shown by Mao this morning. Uh, okay, we, we reached the, uh, the this figure, and uh, you have here the curve of, uh, of the uptake by the users, the number of subscription. Uh, well, this is not the objective to, to, to I mean, this, the, what, what we want to do is to be sure that the people are happy with what they have, with what they have, and that they will use it and disseminate it widely to really uh, be sure that this Copernicus data uh, is used in, uh, in different services. What is good news is that in this transition where, uh, this is the transition here, the Death Valley, you know, when you're doing something in research and development, and, and the, good, the, the, the good news is that, well, okay, you go for operational now, then you cross the Death Valley. Everything is possible and you can be killed in the middle because of something that is, uh, the contract is not ready, uh, the funding is, uh, is a bit, or, uh, sorry, the, I'm not anymore your uh, interlocutor, you should talk to. Uh, and, uh, and this is something that has to be said uh, because it was very difficult to be done at the European Commission level. I mean, Mauro did a great job for this, Mauro Fakini, and this is true for the other services that were active, and we passed this transition from research and development to operational there, and the users, they, they don't know about this. I mean, the goal was a seamless transition, so this is a seamless transition. So now the goal is to explain, okay, you can be confident we are really operational, so you can, this, is, this was said by Vincent Henri also this morning, you can start investing on this, really, because now this is here for, for a while. Um, okay, so this is about the number of users, about the sectorial target. We, uh, we, we have this, uh, this uh, vision of the, uh, of the, the possible uh, use of this data, um, what the, the operational activity, uh, marine operations, or spill drift, defense, such as rescue, they need real time, they need surface currents, they need waves, they need uh, something which is uh, strong in, uh, in reactivity. Uh, marine resources, they're looking for uh, an assessment of the situation for the biogeochemistry, and they are talking about fisheries, they are looking for trends, uh, they, uh, they, are, they, they think about aquaculture. For this uh, coastal environment, water quality, pollution, healthcare, this kind of, uh, of people that are thinking about the quality, running coastal seams and, and looking for boundary conditions to understand the uh, influence of the large ocean and climate and weather forecasting, that is uh, the, the Arctic, the, uh, the, uh, the situation on the, over the years, and that could contribute also to what was presented by Jean-Noël Tepo for the climate service. And uh, we have this measurement of what is done by the users, so these 5,000 users, this is how they, they declare themselves. I mean, when, they, when you register, you have these questions, what do you plan to do with this data? You don't, you're not obliged to say the truth, but just give an indication. And we understand that 
there is a fair share, I mean, this is what I, I, I've shown already, but uh, we are quite happy with this, uh, this area, and we know that in this, in this marine resource, people are looking for more. But you know, because you are familiar with this, that, that science in uh, marine biogeochemistry and all this activity is working hard, but uh, there is still a gap between what is needed by, the, by, the, uh, by the, the users and what is provided. So we are working on it. But this is what is, what is the, the situation when um, this, the, the, mean, the mean situation for the 5,000. At the end of this, I will show you for Sweden. Just in case you start sleeping and think, <laughs> be, be, be aware. The other thing is that, uh, who are you? Uh, well, uh, I am a university educational research 50%. So research is still very strong in the, in the use of this Copernicus data, which is good news. It means that this is good quality. Business company, 16 persons. National Water Service, Oceanographic Public Sector, SMHI, 13 persons. And other. And they don't know or they don't say. There are some variations, but the, uh, this, is, this is quite stable that the, the research is, is still uh, a good, uh, well, a good users. I mean, this was one of our concerns. Do, will they, will they escape? Because they, they consider this is too much operational. No, they stay because they, they, they understand how to use this for the research. Three examples of what could be done. Uh, just keep in mind that in the different thematic areas, user areas, you can be a European agency or a SME, or you can be. Uh, um, a research laboratory or operational team. You're working on uh, marine resources, marine operations. In this case, this is the uh, uh, example of Fukushima. This is far from, uh, from here, but this is public authorities, for instance, the International Atomic Energy um, Agency asking for something. This is DG Marie asking for something. This is research uh, laboratories um, taking the boundary conditions to assess more precisely. And there is all a chain of, of, of uh, stakeholders that are involved in these huge questions, what is the impact? And here the Copernicus Marine Service is able, very quickly, because we are running it with time, to provide all the background information so that the experts take this and, to, and, and, uh, and start uh, developing their own expertise to, uh, to, us, to, to do an assessment. So this is exactly the way you should think about uh, this Copernicus uh, data if you're in this kind of... Uh, public authority uh, activity. Uh, this is one other example of this kind of thing. This is a Coast Guard in Spain. They have everything to work, but uh, since now they have, uh, in addition, the currents from Copernicus, they just uh, made a test. It's a bit old, but they, I like this because they, the, sh the, the sentence is very short, but very effective. I mean, uh, the Sassemar Controller in Tarifa says Resultados muy satisfactorios. I mean, this is easy to understand, uh, I guess. Um, the other example, if we move from public authority to industry, uh, this is an example of the, uh, the ocean thermal energy conversion. I mean, this is the, these people, they are investing a lot of money to try to catch this energy uh, which is uh, uh, down by, uh, by um, pumping waters between, I mean, the, you have cold waters and you have uh, uh, warm waters and you use this gradient to, um, to build energy. And this is a real, uh, a real amount of money, and this is real industry. And um, I, I was uh, one week ago in Oslo with the ocean industry, explaining to these people what we are doing and what how to can play with this. This is an example of what is done with this uh, information. We have here a map of, of the uh, of, of the uh, global ocean, and we are looking at the temperature. And this is the difference between temperature, uh, I mean, the at depth and in the surface. And, uh, so that they can identify the areas where it's worth investing because they are sure that the gradient will be okay and stable and it's not too deep. They don't have to design uh, infrastructures that are uh, going at uh, 3,000 meters. If they go in this area, they can play with something which is quite, uh, quite easy to be, uh, to be managed. Easy, I don't say, but, uh, but, uh, but so this is, the, this is where the, over the marine environment information is feeding ocean industry. You could talk about deep sea mining, you could have other uh, ideas. This is my, uh, my goal to stimulate your, your brain in this. 
And the third example, I mean, we public authority, industry, and then the, uh, the, um, the smartphone application, of course, everything can be done here. Uh, the, the, these, these data are, are free, they are open, they are assessed. You can imagine uh, uh, new services, you can change the business model of some, uh, some existing services. This is an example of, of a smartphone application where you can find this. And I have others, I'm, I'm not sure to have time to show the movie maybe at the end about ship routing, which is uh, very funny to be, um, to be observed. Um, now I'm coming to you. 88 Swedish register users today. And when David sends an email, you don't reply. <laughs> what we know about you? We know that 37% are working in national metal SMHI and oceanographic service public sector. This is the public service. 13 business companies, 42 universities. Um, why do you, do, do you, do you come to, to us? Because you intend to work on marine and coastal environment, or climate in weather forecasting, or marine operations, maritime safety, and 10% marine resources. What for? Because I, I would like to, uh, uh, to support my uh, research or scientific study, 52%, this is the mean value, you're okay. Uh, because of my personal interest, 28%. Explain to me why, how we could manage the future of the Copernicus Marine Customer Service if I only know that this is your personal interest. You have to say a bit more to David. Public service, 11%. I suspect that some of the people that are uh, in the public service sector, they are in the research department and they are not yet, they have not yet opened a discussion with the colleagues that are in, on the operational side. Commercial use, 6%. 13% of the business company, but only 6% are really uh, uh, targeting this for the commercial use. So there are, we are still in the learning, I mean we are building the trust that it's worth investing on this activity and to use it for this. And how do you intend to use it? Uh, well, I will, uh, this is for my, f to fulfill my internal use, I will use the data for, uh, internally at home for the, uh, I mean, to assimilate, or I don't know what. I will build uh, value-added products based on that, one quarter, which is good. I will redistribute these products without any added value, 1%. This is not the best idea you could have. Um, but here, there are something to be done, and of course, this is good news. So this is what we know. Um, and frankly, I think it, we can do better. And I will give you some, uh, uh, some ideas before to end the talk about uh, practical things that could be done. Uh, what you could do today is to talk to David. I promised to David that if he travels to, to, to Stockholm, I will publicize this. So now I think it's done, David, you <laughs> I cannot do more. Today, you talk to David and you learn how to register or you explain why you, you, you're not happy with the situation. Next week, um, as the others, you open a dialogue with the, the company customer service. There are different means for that. You can send emails to individuals. Uh, you can go to the meetings. You can talk during the, the coffee break. You can also um, talk to this, uh, to this service desk, the people you've seen on the, on the, on the the first slide, there, are, there is a forum and you can go on this website. So this is the, just to, to let us know uh, that you're happy, you're unhappy and what you want. Then next month we will, uh, you will have um, on the, uh, on the uh, electronic, I mean on the jo official journal of the EU, procurement uh, tenders open for uh, a series of contracts we tend to sign about the service evolution. We want to engage a wide community of stakeholders to, uh, to bring innovation in the systems. Is there an innovation you're ready to propose and drive? Consider this, and this is really the goal is to, uh, to have new ideas and that you have new people and new teams, new, uh, new, uh, new innovation in that. I mean, innovations in this. We have secured the operational uh, activity. These people are running the, the systems. Every year we update, we have uh, immediate research and development very close to operational activity which is done, we will update, okay, and we are able to, to, 
to welcome the, uh, the to to, um, to manage the requirements of the users to, with this. But I strongly believe that we could have better ideas with more people, a wider community, people that are, were not engaged in Copernicus before. So this is the goal of this tender. Before Christmas, you send feedbacks on what you've agreed with experience. I'm completely unhappy because this is very, very far from what I'm looking for. Okay, say it. Frankly, if you could stop disseminating NetCDF format, I'm only uh, equipped with ASCII files. Okay, say it. Why? Because we are preparing the, the um, evolution for next year. We are building the, the, uh, the work program for next year. We are preparing tenders for the user uptake where this is where we, we, we could fix this with you or others. And uh, we are committed to deliver a reserve requirement document to Mauro Fakini. And we are asked to, uh, to say something about the, the next uh, uh, generation of Sentinels. And uh, we are in different opportunities in contact with scientific community or with other users. So it's important to know what you want. So there will be this, uh, this uh, CMS user uptake, which is something which is similar to this one, but here we want really to, uh, to, to take uh, into account where to, to improve the interface between the service and the users. And uh, we have user workshop and training. We have one for the, uh, before the end of the year, uh, one for the Atlantic and one for the Med Sea. And uh, next year, first semester, we will have something for the Atlantic uh, North Sea. And uh, the last quarter, we'll have something for the Baltic. So it's good for you because uh, you have one year to prepare yourself and to be active in this workshop and training. And, and you could also be uh, actively contributing to this user workshop. We will open the tenders for the organization of this. We don't know yet who will organize and where it will be. It will be a competition. But you're welcome to, uh, to be part of it. So this is the roadmap for you. And uh, I'm coming to my conclusion to say this. With the Copernicus Marine Service, we propose a new access to ocean and environment information, which is um, easy, reliable, assessed, and also sustained, which is something which is new. Uh, I really think this is a real chance for a breakthrough in our value chains. I don't know your value chains. I don't know how you work and what you you're looking for. And, but this is this that there is something to be to be looked at, looked at, sustained solution and real opportunities. And I, I think we can do better. This is the this is the goal. Uh, yes, important things. We are fit players. We are not lost in somewhere in a, in a build building. And we are fit players. I mean, we are people managing the data. The, the, um, well, we, we have problems, and we are looking for solutions with with, uh, with stakeholders that are uh, at the uh, at the playing level. So uh, you're part of the design and the action. This is important. Copernicus is not something which is designed uh, elsewhere than in this room. We have ideas and tools, so I explained what we, how we work and what we plan. Um, but you could have better ideas. So we are, we are listening to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pierre, for an excellent presentation on a really, really nice service. And. Uh, I know what I'm talking about because I'm one of the users myself and I also saw in my inbox a questionnaire that I need to answer. It was not by David, it was by Cedric, I guess, but I need to fill in that. <laughs> so, um, well, I saw that some heads were switching from standby mode to highly alert mode when you mentioned this opportunity to use user wishes and completely change your life. <laughs> so. There's an opportunity to really be in this process and both as a data user but also as a provider, as I understand it. So again, there is an opportunity to really engage in this process. Is this right? Yeah, this is true. Um, we, the first step, as I explained, was to secure the production, which is done. Uh, it was the big, um, the, 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 so this was the tenders we opened at uh, uh, the beginning of the year. So. The goal was to secure this transition, the operational activity, etc. This is this is done. It will be renewed in three years. But now, really, the priority for us is to uh, to stimulate this uh, this operational production with new ideas, and uh, it cannot be done without uh, new people 
and uh, so that's why we have we have prepared these standards that are that will um, welcome. Um, I mean, a team ready to, to work for one or two years uh, to propose something for a new methods, new tools, etc. Um, and so this, it, 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 it is op about to be open and it's really a question of days. Uh, okay, I mean, this is not, what, what I would like to say is this is not a big deal, this is not, this is not um, necessary to be the best champion of Copernicus to know by heart all the vocabulary of Copernicus and to know all the community to enter. It is necessary to have a good idea and to be able to explain how it could be, uh, uh, what could be the impact on the products that will be delivered by, uh, by Copernicus. If you think that the currents are not, uh, of um, the quality is not enough for you, and if you think that by combining this with other things, it could really make a difference. Okay, just you, you could be paid for uh, one year or two to propose something that could be implemented uh, at the end in the, in the service. So this is the, this is the goal. Yes. We have a question there on the floor. Thank you. Um, I was wondering the, the product for um, climate and weather forecasting, in what sense does it differ or, or join with the ECMWF climate change service? So we were last week uh, with Jean-Noël Tepo um, in one of our co coordination meetings, so this is something we, we are taking really seriously uh, to really organize complement, uh, complementarity between the two services. Um, we are, what, what, we, what we are doing is that what is, what is produced by the marine service that could be useful for the climate service is made available, of course, and uh, we make sure that this is not uh, uh, done twice. Uh, typically, this could be the uh, analysis made with the models or the reprocessing of data. But the situation is that we are driven by uh, scales that are more uh, short scales than, than, than uh, the climate service. And uh, if we are con considering, um, I mean, uh, two decades, then Jean-Noël Tepo in the uh, in the climate service will uh, will go will go for more. And uh, this, so we are we are uh, organizing this. And uh, we are also um, considering a situation which was not, I mean, we have not invented everything. So we have, there are, there are different projects, there are different initiatives. So we are looking at the different, uh, uh, we are looking at the, the situations and we try to organize this. Uh, the main idea is that you will have on the climate service everything which is useful for the climate. Even if it has been produced by, by the marine or other services, of course. And you will have something on the marine service which is useful for the marine users. And it will not be paid twice. And uh, we will uh, will add value on the others on the service. Okay, thank you very much. Now you know who Pierre is. You know David out there. And uh, Mauro, you want to comment on that? Thank you. Uh, I take the chance of the presentation of Pierre uh, because I, I have to mention one thing that I didn't mention in my presentation today is that our uh, regulation on Copernicus is requesting by the end of 2017 a midterm evaluation. And uh, the midterm evaluation will be uh, twofold. The first one is to uh, see if we can raise additional funding in the short term. But the main point is to demonstrate that what we are doing is really, has really value. And this will help us to prepare uh, raising funds for the, for the next seven years of the program, so starting in 2020. But the work that will start in 2020 will have to be started in 2018. So what I think Pierre has mentioned today, so this kind of statistics that are requested in, in the number of... So we need actually two things. We need statistics. On, on the users, so this uh, that has been done by Mercator will be done by all the services and will be collected together. We'll need statistics on the providers as well to demonstrate what has been the shape. They are mostly public authorities, private entities, PPPs and, and so on. And then the third point is the user satisfaction. 
because the user satisfaction is the only one that can simply give ideas on how to improve things that, that we are doing. So please take it seriously, because I think if it's not taken seriously, we can forget a Copernicus too in, uh, in some years' time. So my last message, please talk to David. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Mauro. There's the message again. Talk to David. You know exactly what you have to do and how you can engage in this process. Thank you very much, Pierre. Thanks. And once again, the book is still in Swedish.